At the end of the previous video, I destroyed all my infrastructure. I do need at least one server available, but as a heads up, you only need one at this stage. The concept of Ansible is when we learn how to do it for one thing, then in the same way as Terraform, repeating that process for many becomes really easy. If you're thinking that at some future point you're going to need more than one node, then this name in practice where it's like the job that it does and then a number is a fairly common pattern to follow. So I'm going to take the count down to one. As a sanity check, I'm going to run the command make terraform with the command of plan. And assuming that all goes to plan, then I'm going to run the command make terraform command of apply. I'm going to run this at faster speed because there's nothing here that you haven't seen already. Whilst Terraform allows us to dictate what kind of infrastructure we want from the various cloud providers, once those resources, those servers have been made available to us, it's up to us to do something interesting with them. And in order to do that, I'm going to use Ansible to install all the different software that I need on that server and also configure it in some ways. Now Ansible works via SSH, so we might as well check that we can successfully SSH into our server at this point. Now this connection prompt is quite an interesting one, normally you kind of blindly say yes to this I imagine, and we'll see how this could affect us if we don't provide a little bit of config a little later on when using Ansible. If you're anything like me then configuring firewalls and stuff like that is probably not your strong point, but by leveraging Ansible we can use industry standards and best practices and stuff, and the way that we'll do that is by making use of third party roles. If you think of each individual role as being like one key important task, whether it's installing and configuring a firewall or installing Docker or things like that, then that's what a role is going to do for us. We're going to use Docker to run Ansible and this has the advantage that you don't need to install and maintain Ansible and its own dependencies on your local machine. There are some caveats to this, it depends on how your SSH keys are set up, so have a look at the show notes around that. This is going to be more problematic if your SSH key needs a passphrase. I'm going to use William Yee Docker Ansible image as our starting point. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now this is clearly not an official image from Ansible themselves. For some reason, I don't know why, they have deprecated their own Docker image. By looking at the Docker file for this image, we can see that if everything goes to plan, it should output the contents of an Ansible playbook with the version flag. And that's exactly what we seem to get, so let's move on. And following the Ansible 2.7 best practices, I'm going to start off by creating a file called site.yaml. This is going to contain my master playbook. And then in my case, I'm going to have a Rancher 2 Kubernetes node.yaml file as well. This is another playbook, but it's a lot more specific to what we're doing. Now, even though it feels a little bit overkill at this point, the first and only entry that I'm going to have in my site.yaml is to import the playbook, the Rancher 2 Kubernetes node.yaml file. This starts to make more sense as you end up with more and more playbooks. Our Rancher 2 Kubernetes node playbook is going to be the much more interesting of the two. Inside our playbook, we give the playbook itself a name, and we'll see that on the command line it makes things much more obvious as to what's happening. You should pretty much always name everything where possible in Ansible. It makes your life a lot easier. We can specify exactly which hosts we want this playbook to apply to. This is an arbitrary string at this point, we will actually implement this as we go through. And then we can specify what roles we want for this playbook. Essentially this is the software and the configuration that the end result of running this playbook should achieve. Now this role doesn't exist, I'm just creating this as again an arbitrary string. I will have to go ahead and implement this role. We'll see there's a really quick way of doing this. Now in order to start using roles, I'm going to have to create a roles directory and you can see the directory tree at this point. Now if we take a look at our project in VS Code at the moment, it's a little bit misleading because we've got that make file open from the Terraform project, but we will want a new make file for the Ansible project. We're going to end up with quite a lot of Docker commands that we most likely don't want to be continually typing in at the terminal. Let's get started then with the very first of these, which is going to be create role. I'm going to prefix my command with the at symbol. This is going to suppress the command getting written out to the terminal. I personally think this is a bit messy, but of course, leave the at off and you will see the full command. We have a docker run dash dash rm. This will remove the container after its execution has finished. This is nice because it means we don't have to do that much housekeeping. We'll need a volume and I'm going to use the roles directory under the current working directory as our source and inside the resulting container that will be available at etc ansible roles. This is especially important when using this command because we will be creating roles 
and without this mapping, the resulting files would be lost when our container terminates. As we've already seen, we're going to be using William Yee's Ansible image with the Alpine 3 tag. Now we saw earlier that the default command that this image will run is Ansible playbook with the version flag. What we want instead is the Ansible Galaxy command. So we want to Ansible Galaxy init a new role, which I'm going to call codereviewvideos.common. In this way, it's a bit of a cheat. We're going to make Ansible do the hard work of creating the directory structure for a role for us. One of the options to Ansible Galaxy init is the init path. And this way we can explicitly tell the Ansible Galaxy command where to create our new role content. It's no coincidence that this path is an exact match with our bound volume. Now as covered in the previous video, I'm going to set the make target of create role as a phony target. So if we tidy this command up a little bit by adding another line there after init, we can see that the Ansible Galaxy init command should really never change but the name of the role that we wish to create will change. So that's a variable. And we know that in a make file, we can use variables. So I'm gonna call this variable role, and then we can jump over to the terminal and try this out. So if we run make create role, where the role is codereviewvideos.common, we should find that our role is created. And if we browse back inside the project using VS Code, we can see that it has been and again, we can clarify and confirm this from the terminal using tree. Now, admittedly, whilst this creates a best practice role structure, it does also create a lot of noise. The truth is we don't need almost all of this, just the tasks and the main.yaml file. So back inside VS Code, I'm gonna open up the tasks directory and the main.yaml file. And in there, I'm gonna get started creating my common role. Now, what's common to your servers is entirely unique to you. In my case, and just for the purposes of, of example, I'm gonna install Vim, or at least that's the intention. I think the server already has Vim on it, which we'll come to a little later in this video. All we're gonna do is give our task a name. In this case, we're gonna use the package command to specify that we want to install Vim. We do that by setting the state to present. So after this particular role has run, Vim should be present as a piece of software on our target server. At this stage, we haven't actually specified what our target server or servers may be. And to do that, we need to create an inventory file, which I'm gonna call production, as this would indicate that this is the inventory for production. You can, of course, have a staging environment, a test environment, whatever you need. Just change the file name accordingly. Now, when we set up our Rancher 2 Kubernetes nodes playbook, we specified that that playbook should apply to any host inside our Rancher 2 Kubernetes nodes group. So let's go ahead and use that as our title of our group. And then we're gonna need the IP address from the server that we've just created. And as covered in the previous video, there's various ways to get this. We used an output, for example, but most of the time I find myself referring back to the Terraform TF state file and picking out the values that I want. In this case, it's the IP address, and I'm gonna give it a name. And though you don't have to, I'm going to copy the exact node name that I used when creating this node in Terraform and keep that the same inside Ansible. However, because it's not a real valid DNS entry, I need to use the Ansible underscore host inventory parameter to tell Ansible what the real IP address is of this node. Now, because we're using Ubuntu 16.04, we're going to hit upon a problem in that Python 3 is going to be installed, but by default, Ansible is going to try and use Python 2 when running commands on the remote system. So there's various ways to solve this, including using host vars, or group vars, but at this stage, I'm going to go with the simplest option, which is to set the Ansible Python interpreter path to be Python 3. The final change that I'm gonna make in this file is one of personal preference. You don't need to do this, but if you think a server is gonna end up with multiple roles, for example, maybe it would be a web server and a database server, then you can leave the server's alias inside the group, but move the full entry to the top of the file. This way you can put one server into multiple groups without lots of repetition. And with that thought of repetition in mind, now would be a good time to set up our Ansible config file with some sensible defaults. As we saw a little bit earlier, when we first provision a server and try and SSH into it, our system will prompt us to say that the authenticity of the remote host can't be established. And if we're sure that we want to continue, then we have to type in yes. Now this is going to be a problem when we're trying to provision multiple servers. We don't want to hit this prompt every single time. So instead we can tell Ansible that host key checking should be false. So it may be that you consider this too insecure for your own environment. 
so use your own appropriate levels of caution. I'm also going to set up the privilege escalation section. Now one of the cool things about Ansible is it allows you to become another user, which means we can log in as one user and then escalate our privileges to become another user. This is fairly common if you've ever used Linux, where you might use a privilege escalation tool such as sudo to bump up the level of privileges that you've got so that you can install software. We're going to use three different directives. The first is become, which will actually enable privilege escalation. We're going to use the become method of sudo. That's because we're on a Debian based system and the user that we want to become will be the root user. Now we're going to be logging in as root, so it's not really that important to do this, but it's a good practice to get into. As in the real world, you probably don't want to SSH in as root. With all that done, that should be enough config in place for us to go ahead and run our first playbook. Now this is going to be another long winded docker command. And to begin with, that command is going to look very similar to the create role command. So we might as well just start by making a copy paste of that entry. Where things start to differ is that we're going to need our public and private SSH keys mapping from our local machine into the running container. In essence, we're going to make our local users SSH key act as if it's the root users SSH key inside the resulting container. Make sure that you repeat this process for both the IDRSA and the IDRSA.pub keys. This is both your public and your private key. Next, I'm going to map the current working directory, which is going to be the directory that contains all our Ansible roles and all our inventory and stuff like that into an arbitrary path inside the resulting container, which I'm calling CRV-Ansible. You can call it whatever you like, but whatever you do call it, you need to make sure that you pass in the working directory flag, that's the dash W, to be the same path. This means when our container runs, we're going to start in that directory. And this is why we don't need a full path when we say use the inventory from our production file and our master site.yaml playbook. So before going too much further, it would make sense to check that what we're about to do is actually going to make sense after we've done it. So as a very quick overview, our master site playbook is going to call our Rancher2 Kubernetes nodes playbook, and that is then going to run our codereviewvideos.com and roll, which as we've set up in this video is going to go ahead and install Vim. The thing is, I already have Vim installed on this server, so that's not really going to be a great demonstration of what Ansible can do for us. If I check the htop command, I can see that that isn't currently installed. So if we swap out vim to htop, then after we've run our playbook successfully, we should expect to have htop installed. So with that change in place, running the make run underscore playbook command at this stage should in theory get us to a point where we've got htop installed on our remote system. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I've made a typo there. So I'm just going to jump back in and make sure that I've got Ansible hyphen playbook instead of Ansible space playbook. With that change, I should be able to rerun the command make run underscore playbook. And this time we seem to be getting a little bit further, but unfortunately we still fail. And we can see at the very bottom there that it's saying no package matching htop is available. This is very similar to when you've just freshly installed the server and you jump on there and you try and apt get install a piece of software, but it's not yet known about by apt. And in order to make apt aware of it, we need to do an apt get update. There doesn't seem to be a way to do this using Ansible's generic package manager. However, we can explicitly use apt, which then gives us the parameter of update underscore cache, which we can say yes to, which will force a cache update and therefore resolve our problem. And with that bit of configuration in place, this time through, with a bit of luck, we should end up with htop installed on our system. So when we jump onto that system again via SSH and run htop, this time round, we should see the expected htop output. Now, one thing to make you aware of with Ansible is we could keep rerunning this command over and over, and it's not going to try and reinstall software that's already there. In the same way as Terraform, Ansible is idempotent. So the good news is at this point, we're well underway with our dockerized Ansible stack. And in the next video, we're going to take this even further.